All right, now to picture perfect Utah, where some fear history may be repeating itself in the most horrific way. A convicted killer is now claiming he inspired a family massacre from behind bars. And today in a Crime Watch Daily exclusive, that killer's daughter is breaking her silence to another killer's daughter, our special correspondent, Melissa Moore. Prophets, polygamy and the priesthood. And punishment far worse than purgatory for those who disobey in some radical sects of the church. There's been revelation given and there's been prophecies and warnings made throughout the uh, scriptures and being fulfilled now. Rebecca Lafferty's father, Dan Lafferty, and uncle Ron Lafferty get a revelation from God, telling them there are some who need to be removed. My uncle was the voice of God, and my dad was the hand of God. Thou shalt not kill, but they did. He proceeded to slit her throat. Two victims, one a 15-month-old girl. How could somebody be so disconnected that they could just take a baby's life like that? Then, years later from behind bars, Dan Lafferty, whom the hand of God may have transformed into the voice of God, allegedly inspiring a family of five to carry out a grisly murder-suicide plot. Christy and Ben Strack had a relationship with convicted killer Dan Lafferty. He has very strong beliefs himself about the end of the world. What was it like being raised by a murdering messiah? And how did his daughter manage to get away with her life when others weren't so lucky? Rebecca Lafferty grew up in a strict Mormon household near Provo, Utah, with her mom, dad, and two older half-sisters. From a young age, she followed the prophet's teachings, whether the prophet was in church or at home. In the Mormon faith, men hold the priesthood, and they have the authority over their households. The man has the voice, the man makes the decisions for the family and the household, and that was very present in our household. My father was very dominating. Rebecca loved her chiropractor father, but also was afraid of his dictatorial ways. I loved him because he was my dad, but I also feared him, and then at some point I didn't trust him. Over time, Lafferty would become more iron-fisted, especially with Rebecca's two older sisters from her mom's previous marriage. He cut their hair and made them pretty much look like boys, and then told them they would not date, they were not to listen to any music, and he actually pulled them out of public school. Then, Rebecca says, things escalated. One night, Rebecca's mom walked in on her 14-year-old daughter sitting on Dan's lap. Allegedly, Dan was touching her bare breasts. My father said he would never let it happen again, and he even walked around with a pebble in his shoe. A pebble in his shoe? Yeah, to punish himself. A reminder? A reminder to try to not be attracted to her, to think about wanting to touch her. But the pebble was no cure. My sister came to my mom and said, it's happening again. And it was becoming more than just fondling. He wanted to have sex with her. And strangely, the attention confused Rebecca. There's even a part of me like, did he love her more than he loved me? I don't want to be molested, but I want attention. Why did he want to give her, gave her all this attention? Rebecca says Dan became more radicalized. He wanted to practice polygamy and take his 14-year-old stepdaughter as his second wife. Neither Rebecca's mom nor the Mormon church would stand for that. The Mormon church excommunicated him. Rebecca's mom soon would too. Lafferty took his worship elsewhere with his five brothers, including older brother Ron and younger brother Alan. They started the School of Prophets, a fundamentalist splinter group. The School of Prophets was a cult that they created. I just remember them bringing in a pulpit and speaking in our own home. It was very hush-hush, and it was just weird. Proclaiming themselves prophets, Ron and Dan made one of their main tenets polygamy. But their legal wives, Rebecca's mom and Ron's wife, Diana, were both against the practice. So was Alan's wife, Brenda, an outspoken, college-educated former beauty queen who became a confidant to the other women. Come to find out, she been visiting all of the wives, and one in particular, Diana, who's my Uncle Ron's wife, saying there are options, you have choices. 
Not long after, Diana bravely left her husband, Ron. Due to Brenda's uh, coaching and empowering her and saying, you don't need to live like this. Rebecca's mom was next, packing up the kids and leaving Dan. Then, a year later, the unimaginable. Ron Lafferty receives a revelation. My uncle Ron had a prophecy, and he wrote it down, and it was to eliminate Brenda, her baby, and another list of people that had helped Diana leave him. The removal revelation was heard. The Lafferty brothers were about to sentence Brenda and her baby Erica to eternal damnation. And this is actually the duplex where he committed the crimes. Your father committed the murders right here. Yes. And you were just seven years old. What do you know about those murders? My aunt had a feeling that they were coming to get her, so she didn't let them in. She opened the door just a crack, and that's when, I guess, Ron forced his way in there and proceeded to beat her. And I know she was pleading, please, please, don't hurt my baby. And that's when he called her a bitch. My dad was in the car. He got out and he said a prayer and felt the need to, to say, OK, God, I guess this is my part. If I should not do this, please send me an angel to stop me. And he walked in, saw her laying there. He took the telephone cord to kind of stop her from breathing. And then he proceeded to slit her throat. And then he went into the baby's room. And he just went over and killed her. <laughs> I don't understand how he could do that. Ron and Dan Lafferty were arrested at Circus Circus Casino in Reno, Nevada. The brothers represented themselves at trial. Dan was found guilty and sentenced to life. Ron was convicted and sentenced to the death penalty. Then, on appeal, he was found incompetent and sent to a state hospital for treatment. Three years later, Ron Lafferty's competency was restored and after a three-week trial was found guilty of capital murder. Reportedly, former LDS President Gordon Hinckley said the Lafferty brothers, quote, have no connection to us whatsoever. They don't belong to the church. There actually are no Mormon fundamentalists. With Rebecca's dad sitting in a Utah prison and not the coveted celestial kingdom, like a serpent, his patriarchal powers may have struck again. They all took poison. Coming up. The whole family is yes, dead. Yes, yes. Did Dan Lafferty's gospel help guide another family to their gruesome demise?